Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Robinson. I'm the program director for NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, and I'm looking forward to launching it later this year, uh, so it's coming pretty fast. Uh, again, welcome to everyone. Uh, thank you for participating in this STEAM event, and uh, I hope that you will continue to participate uh, virtually as we have uh, many more. So continue to dial in. It's extremely important. So I'm just tell you a little bit about, about the telescope. Uh, James Webb has been in development for, for quite a few years. It's a follow-on to the Hubble uh, telescope, and many of you have heard of Hubble. Uh, most of you were not born when it was launched over 30 years ago, and it's given us tremendous science and images of our universe. And we like to say, and technically, Webb is 100 times more powerful than Hubble, if you could imagine that. And it's going to unlock many, many mysteries of, the, of our universe, uh, of other planets and certainly even within our solar system. So I'm looking forward to telling you just a little bit about James Webb and hopefully you'll be as excited as I am uh, when we're all done. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about the, the observatory itself, it's made up in, in two major halves. Uh, one, as you can see on the top, uh, that's the telescope. Uh, it has 18 segmented mirrors. The segmented means they're, they're separate and we articulate them and turn them into one one big mirror in space. And you see the two bars going across the uh, vertical on the telescope on the mirrors. That's the secondary uh, mirror. It comes out front, it deploys out front in, of the primary mirror in space. So that's one big piece of, of the telescope. On the back side of it is where we have the, the uh, payloads or the science instruments. Those are the instruments that will process all of that, that light that the mirrors take in. And, and turn it into science products. So that's one half. Um, and just beneath it, you see the five layers of sun shield. They're extremely thin, about the size of a human hair, each one. And, and fully deployed, that's the size of a, a tennis court. So uh, pick your favorite uh, tennis player, uh, whether that's Venus or Serena or Naomi or um, Fernandez from Canada or Djokovic, uh, you, you choose. Um, so it's the size of a tennis court, if you could imagine just that scale. That has to deploy in space after launch. And the purpose of that is to keep the telescope side of the observatory uh, very cold, looking off into deep space, because light and heat uh, work against a uh, telescope looking and peering into the darkness. On the other side of the sun shield, it keeps the other side of the observatory close to room temperature and maybe a little bit hotter, uh, but uh, quite a bit warmer than the telescope side. So the, the other half of the observatory is what we call the spacecraft element, and that includes that sun shield I just talked about, and it also includes the, the spacecraft bus. That's all of the electronics, the brains, the control systems for the observatory, and that has to stay uh, fairly warm as well. So. Both halves make up the, the full telescope, and, and of course, we will launch it on, on a rocket, uh, which I'll talk about in, in just a minute. Um, so this telescope is going to peer deep into space and tell us a lot about, uh, you know, three or 400 years after the Big Bang, what actually happened during that time and how it happens. It would also look at uh, habitable planets, uh, we call them exoplanets, uh, when this was uh, first developed. Um, more than 20 years ago, the development started. Exoplanets, we didn't know much about them. Now we know about thousands of them. Uh, so this will better characterize many of those exoplanets. Are they habitable? Uh, what are the orbits? What's the size? What are the uh, elements on that planet? And closer to home, it will help us better characterize our own solar system. It will look at the atmosphere of Mars as an example give us a lot of information that we can't get today from our orbiting missions and, and our landers and, and uh, rovers on Mars. So it's an amazing telescope. It can tell us about uh, the origin of the universe, what's going on in other planets outside of our solar system, and help us better understand our own solar system. Uh, so amazing capability, uh, and, and we're looking forward to uh, getting all of that science, and as we often say, we'll likely rewrite the physics books. Uh, for real. Uh, so I've told you a lot about the telescope itself and the observatory. Um, one of the main features of, of this uh, of web is 
it's so large and so complex, it will not fit inside of a, a rocket fairing. The fairing is the top part of the rocket that holds a, a satellite. Uh, so we have to fold it up origami style, which you can see on the right there. So that's what we call the flight configuration. Uh, the, those sun, the sun shields are on both halves on the, um, um, what I call the, the field goal, field goal post folded up and you can see the mirror folded up in the middle. And of course in space, it has to deploy, uh, which is quite complex. Uh, but, uh, engineers and technicians have done a lot of work on this to make sure it's ready. Uh, Significant testing. You can see a technician there in, in the clean room in the high bay uh, doing some work on the observatory. Looks like it's underneath. Uh, very, very intricate environment. And of course, uh, when it's deployed in, in the clean room, uh, it gets even more complicated because there's a lot of stuff uh, uh, to move around to get access to other pieces. Uh, so going back to the stowed position on the right, uh, that's how it's going to look. When we ship it uh, to French Guyana, although it will ship in a container in the horizontal position, and that once we get to the launch site, it will go back to this position in the vertical. We will do the closeout work and put it on top, after we fuel it, put it on, on top of the rocket inside that fairing and take it out to the pad for launch. And that launch is coming up pretty fast. It's uh, December 18th, uh, right before Christmas, so it'll be a Christmas present to the world and certainly to me, so I'm looking forward to that. And and many of you all, um, when you go back 20 years, uh, many folks that helped develop web who were in your age group uh, when we first started. Many of them have had uh, excellent uh, STEM uh, college careers. They've come on to NASA or at some of our contractors and partners. They've actually helped develop uh, this telescope to what it is today. And of course, uh, our future large telescopes and other science missions and even our exploration and, and research in, in aeronautics, many of you will actually participate and, and build in that future. And I'm certainly looking forward to that. And, and uh, one other note on that, within the US alone, uh, James Webb was developed across 29 different states. So a lot of people touched it, over 10,000 people. And with our partners, uh, the Canadian Space Agency to the north, uh, they've had many people touch it as well. They've, they've contributed some of the, the hardware, the systems, uh, instruments in particular. And certainly in Europe, uh, the European Space Agency, uh, they've had 14 different countries uh, touch web in development and contributions. And Europe is contributing instruments and the launch vehicle that's developed by, by Ariane, Ariane Spas. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to launch from French Guyana. So in another week and a half. We're going to put this in a shipping container. We're going to ship it down from Southern California down through the Panama Canal around uh, the, the northeast side of South America down to French Guyana and, and to Karoo. And we'll take it over to the processing facility and get it ready to put it on the rocket to launch uh, in mid-December. So really getting excited about that. And as I mentioned earlier, more than 10,000 engineers, technicians, uh, scientists and others have actually contributed to building our James Webb. So I look forward to a future where many of you will build the next systems. Many of you will travel into space and many of you will build these, these space vehicles, whether they're for humans or for science or for other types of, of technology and research. So it's ex extremely important for you to continue to pursue STEM careers, uh, certainly the ones who are in the younger ages always say uh, do extremely well in school. When people ask me, what does it take to be an engineer to work on James Webb? It's pretty basic. And what my parents told me when I was little, work hard, do well in school, and continue to take science and math uh, courses and continue to do well. So I will ask you to do the same thing. And I look forward to seeing you all develop the next systems and also look forward to seeing you all, including my three grandsons, uh, fly in space uh, in my lifetime. So that's the story of James Webb. Uh, again, welcome uh, to the STEAM event. Continue to participate. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in some of these uh, clean rooms and on other planets in the future. Again, uh, thank you.